easy. I told her we can do this the easy way or the hard way. She chose the hard way. I have so many questions and clearly I haven't been getting the answers, so I had no choice but to take it to the next level, folks. Welcome to the thousands of fans here at Celebration! this live stream right now. I am Josh Gad, and I am here because Daisy Ridley forced my hand. This is truly insane. I mean, this is actually my first time at Star Wars Celebration. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And I gotta be honest, if I weren't up here, I would be out there with you guys. That's how much of a Star Wars aficionado I am. I don't love it. Uh, my Star Wars obsession goes back to when I was four years old. I remember watching the original trilogy on VHS, which for those of you, yeah, which for those of you who are millennials in the audience, is the same thing Wally uses to watch old movies with the <laughs> Wally. You know, I remember skipping an entire day of school, camping out at night to go see The Phantom Menace. That's me, dressed as Darth Maul, and my friend dresses something resembling Yoda. Uh, and then we skipped another day of school to watch the movie three times in a row. And then, I, I mean, they didn't have advanced ticket sales back then, that's why. And then, of course, I was invited, I was lucky enough to be invited to the Star Wars premiere two years ago, which was amazing. But, thank you. But even cooler than that, I have to say, was sitting in the El Capitan Theater with an audience full of Star Wars fans watching the entire marathon from Phantom Menace all the way through Return of the Jedi. That's us with Mr. Ray Park back there and my friends. Incredible. There is nothing like that kind of anticipation that everyone was feeling. And you can feel that anticipation right now in this room. We get ready to talk about what happens next. The Last Jedi! What does it all mean? We have questions! They have answers, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome President of Lucasfilm, Kathleen Kennedy! Maker, Kathy. I mean, you're incredible. So, you've been very busy uh, in the last two years since the last time we saw you at Celebration. You want to tell us what's been going on in the Star Wars universe? Not much. <laughs> First of all, I want to say that uh, we took a big risk last year when we did Rogue One. one of you out there for showing up and not only showing up but really showing us a lot of love because it gives us the confidence to keep going in that direction. Alright, and before we jump into all things Last Jedi, you did something really cool last night. You Familiar faces. You were out there. You were out there for over four hours last night with this incredible group of people mingling with the crowd. It was it was a blast, and I, I actually I, I want to thank everybody because you know yesterday watching the 40th anniversary panel, um, it, and then thinking about just all what this means to all of us. 
um, I started getting really scared. It's really, it's really scary when I was doing this. And coming out last night, getting to meet all you guys, feeling just the positivity, feeling the encouragement, and just getting to actually, um, I don't know, just to just meet you guys and get to know all you a little bit. It, it was, it, it, it uh, thank you. We, this is the best fan family in the world. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing. All right. So now we've gotten all of the pleasantries out of the way. I have to ask you the question on everybody's mind. Where are we at with The Last Jedi? Uh, we, we're actually, so we're in post-production. We're, we're still editing, but we're very far along. We're doing quite well, and it's all coming together. Yeah. There, was that a picture, by the way, before? Can we go back for a second? Is there a picture of you? Hang on. No, not that. That's you with these people. We did that. <laughs> is there a picture of you signing the Millennium Falcon? Did I see that? <laughs> is that you signing the actual Millennium Falcon? It's a, it's a perk of the job. That is so cool. So there are, I assume there are no close-up shots now of the Millennium Falcon anymore. Uh, no, you can't. Yeah, if you look very closely on any of the flybys. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Kathy, what does Ryan bring in terms of new style to the Star Wars universe? Well, I think you're already getting a sense of it, but I'm going to embarrass him by saying that um, he is on his way to standing alongside many of the great filmmakers that I've had the opportunity to work with. He has an amazing uniqueness to what he does. He also writes as beautifully as he directs, which is quite incredible. And um, he writes amazingly fierce and independent women. He's also got a great sense of humor. And that, as everybody in this room knows, is so important to Star Wars. So it's a pretty fantastic package. I should stop talking after that and just leave the stage. Not, everything is just downhill after that. Thank you, Kathy. All right, so Ryan, tell us about shooting the movie. The, the whole Pinewood connection, you know, Star Wars has a history of shooting in London. Talk about that. Well, I guess we had the time of our lives making this movie. It was such a joyful experience from, from top to bottom. And we were in shooting in Pinewood Studios in England, which to me, it was my first, yeah, it was my first time being there. And um, I don't know about you guys, but for me, like growing up, uh, it was like, Pinewood Studios was like Camelot or something. It was like this mythical place that you heard about with the movies that, you know, Bond movies were shot there. And uh, to actually set up camp there and be able to come into work every day, um, it just added to this magical experience. The legacy really is insane because I've shot two films in London and the only thing the crew ever wants to talk about are the Star Wars films. They're like, oh, that's where the Millennium Falcon was. We're like, we need to be setting up for lunch now. Um, <laughs> So, Ryan, you also spent time in Ireland, I saw on social media. I always, I always love, like, when I see pictures like this, this is Skellig, right? That's Skellig. Skellig and Dingle. I yeah, that's... That we were in Dingle. I, are the locals there, like, amazed by... Do they, like, look out the window and, like, they, there's Luke Skywalker with the lightsaber. I can't possibly do my homework, Papa. <laughs> I Irish apologize to any locals right I know, I've never invited an Ireland again. <laughs> but is it like crazy? Yeah, well it was, I'll tell you man, because we were up and down the west coast of Ireland and um, everywhere we went. And I, anyone who's in Ireland right now who's, who's watching this, we miss you guys, we love you guys. You guys were so welcoming of us and this big unruly film crew that came in and set up all this stuff and you guys were, just had so much love for all of us. And, Man, we had, yeah, we had a great time there. And shot some beautiful, beautiful landscapes and just some great stuff. Speaking of shooting landscapes, I hear that you took a lot of pictures on set, is that correct? Yeah, no, that was, so that was something I realized at the beginning of it. Um, I realized I, I had kind of a front row seat for all this cool behind the scenes stuff. And I was, besides the set photographer, I was like the only person on set who could take pictures and not get like tackled and kicked in the face. So. <laughs> I have, I have, this is my war horse, this is my 
Leica film camera that I got right before Looper, and then when I was making Looper, I just had this on my arm, and I just shot a ton of stills. So I did the same thing on this movie. I just had this camera on my arm the entire time, and anything I saw was cool. I would just snap away at it. These are some of the some of the shots you see here. But I got I ended up taking like thousands of pictures of the whole process. The man. Oh, that's right. Look at that attitude. <laughs> oh, Lord. And it ends up being, I mean, it was it was fun and it also at the end of this whole experience, because this is like you do this, you know, this is a once in a life experience. Just to have all these memories captured. This, this poor guy. I feel so bad for that guy. <laughs> Someone's gotta do it. These, these are incredible. So the entire film was shot. I kept shouting, that's Stuart, our second AD, was grabbing that thing. I think that's Stuart. And I kept shouting, you're the force, Stuart. You're the force. <laughs> uh, wow, unbelievable. So the entire film was shot in black and white? Yeah, but we haven't told Disney yet, though, so let's keep that. Dude, don't tweet that. Don't tweet that. <laughs> Callie Martin doesn't so, know so, that so yet. You're, you're first. Um, I would be remiss. Uh, not mentioning someone we all miss and love, the great Carrie Fisher. Um, yeah, yesterday I watched that incredible tribute. I bawled. Then John Williams came out and I fell off before sobbing. Um, it was really incredible and I'd love to hear from both of you guys. What was it like continuing to develop the great princess, now General Leia? Well, it was extraordinary, needless to say. Um, <laughs> Carrie is remarkable in the movie. I mean, what, what Ryan wrote and what she, the performance she ends up giving, I think you guys are gonna find that a, an amazing tribute to her talent. Yeah, she, I mean, I, uh, yeah, Carrie, I, I mean, it was such a moving tribute yesterday, and I, I don't know if I can add to that. I, I, love, I love her so much, man. I just adore her. And, uh, and I and connected with her first and foremost as a writer, you know. She's a brilliant writer, has an incredible mind, and um, we, like, would sit on, I'd go to her house, we'd sit on her bed for hours and go through the script, and we would just have these kind of, these kind of stream of consciousness, jazz poetry kind of like ad lib sessions. And I would just scribble on my script everything she said, and then at the end of six hours, there would be like a four word line of dialogue that would be like <laughs> the distillation all of all that. Uh, that was brilliant. You know, I'd be like, oh my God. Yeah, I saw that piece yesterday where she can remember every single line that she did from all of it. That was incredible. Um, well, she truly was ahead of her time and led the way for what has become a legacy of strong, empowered, empowered heroines. Speaking of strong, empowered Two years ago, at Celebration in Anaheim, we were introduced to a new heroine. A new face who has now become part of the iconic Star Wars lexicon, someone I've had the pleasure of working with, getting to know, and harassing on a daily basis. Please welcome Daisy Ridley! Yeah. 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 Daisy. I would love to put the past behind us. Uh, it's not about my questions anymore. It's about their questions now. You don't owe me anything, but you may want to think twice because they seem like a very aggressive crowd. 
the millions of people at home watching, I'm sure, would like some of these questions answered as well. So I've got a couple of questions. A couple of questions I'd like to ask you, up to you whether or not you want to answer. Are you and Luke related by blood? <laughs> no to that one. Okay. Are you a Skywalker? Is your name Ray Skywalker? Is your name Ray Kenobi? <laughs> Who doesn't know their own last name? Can you imagine if I went up to you and I said, my entire name is Josh, good to meet you. Are you like the Madonna of Jakku? <laughs> okay, all right. I see we're getting nowhere. I see we're getting nowhere, Daisy. Um, so I'll start off with a simple question. Daisy, did you enjoy working on The Last Jedi? Look at me! tell you some things. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. A small amount I have for you. What I can say is in The Last Jedi, um, we go deeper into Rey's story. Um, and what is very apparent from where we left off in The Force Awakens and where we begin with The Last Jedi is Rey has a certain expectation as to what she might be getting from Luke and what that might entail. And as a lot of people know, it's uh, difficult when you meet your heroes because it might not be what you expect. That's quite a lot, right? Plenty. That's plenty. That's it. But I will say, uh, that picture was shot in Ireland. We had the most incredible time. It was, honestly, it was very nerve-wracking going back for the second time. Because the first time around, I didn't quite know what I was doing. I was just bumbling along, and luckily I had Kathy and JJ and everyone as a wonderful kind of cushion around me. Um, the the, the um, response to The Force Awakens was amazing. But, um, but coming back the second time, I felt a certain responsibility, and I was like, oh, I should know what I'm doing now, and I kind of don't. But luckily, Ryan's writing is beautiful. The film, I think, is great. Um, and we had the best time. Woo! You know, I've spoken to you about this before. As a father of two girls, I feel, and, and I think a lot of this is due to you as well, I feel incredible about the fact that there are all of these strong, empowered females now inhabiting the Star Wars world in the mold of Leia. What is it like coming back here two years later, being with the fans when they first got to meet you, now they all have your action figures, they all have your dresses, some of them have your dresses, not all of them. Um, but, you know, what is it like knowing that you are a part of this history now? What I will say is, um, people kept kind of congratulating me on that, and that was Michael, Larry, and JJ, and Kathy, and all of the story developers at Lucasfilm, that's who created Ray. I was just lucky enough to be able to embody that. It's it's insane. It's like, it kind of goes, like, I kind of forget it happened, and then, like, I can see people wearing a costume. I'm like, oh my god, this is real. <laughs> but it's really wonderful, and especially people who have little girls, um, the, the way that people talk about Ray and the way that this film has affected them is amazing. So I'm very happy to be part of it. Can I say, Josh, actually? So, I mean, that's very gracious to Daisy, and she's very right. Um, and obviously, she's not Ray. She's a great actor who's playing Ray. But. So much of the stuff that um, people respond to in that character, and having gotten to know Daisy and gotten to work with gotten to work with her over the past few years, the tenacity and the bravery and the humor and the depth and so many of the things that make little kids want to be Ray, um, just like the things that people looked up to and Leia came from Carrie, those things are Daisy. My daughter's favorite action figure is the Ray doll. And I say, put that away. She won't answer any questions. <laughs> put it away. Um, all right, without divulging too much, obviously, what are you most excited about for fans to experience in The Last Jedi? I think what we're all very excited for, Luke's first words. Yeah. That is definitely true. In addition to Daisy, The Force Awakens introduced other talented newcomers to the world. Two years ago, 
We met another star for the very first time at the celebration stage, and now, after a massively successful on-screen debut and a world press tour, who doesn't recognize this celebrity? Returning to the Star Wars celebration, please welcome BB-8! Talking backstage, I was telling you that I've been studying droid Rosetta Stone. <laughs> right? Got a couple of questions for you. First off, how are you today, Eight? Do you mind if I call you Eight? <laughs> oh, oh, he says, no, please call me BB Eight. Unlike Daisy, I have a full name and I intend to. <laughs> oh, that's that's passive aggressive, BB Eight. All right, what was it like working with the great Ryan Johnson? No, oh, right. I love Looper too. Yeah. No, who doesn't love JGL? Uh huh. He said, What? Shame on you, Ryan. Shame on you. That joke went over much better in rehearsal. <laughs> All right, finally, this is a softball question, BB 8. Take your time with this one. Uh, how should I phrase this? Um, who is the last Jedi? <laughs> Come here, hey, BB-8. Right, don't do it. Don't look at them. BB-8, look at don't me. Don't do it, BB-8. Look at me, BB-8. <laughs> no, I know what an NDA agreement is. No, there's, no, there's, no, reason, to, there's no, re no reason to bring lawyers into this meeting. All right, BB-8, ladies and gentlemen. at how much the technology has advanced. Because it used to be like a puppet, right? Like puppet control? I don't know what you're talking about. That's BB-8. I know, that's, that's BB-8, but his, mm, worry, we'll talk about it later when the cameras are off. So speaking of BB-8, he was one of my favorite characters in the film. And I think one of the coolest things about him was all of the physical comedy that you guys came up with. Well, I remember the moment where he uses the lighter as a thumbs up. Um, are there new technological advancements and comedy moments with regard to BB-8? Oh, yes there are. Yeah, the, the best advice I got going into this whole process was from JJ's editors who told me you can't have enough BB-8. Uh, and we followed their advice. He's the Buster Keaton of this movie. You know? no, he's, he's, I'm excited for you guys to see what he does in this movie. It's pretty fun. Incredible. Incredible. All right. Uh, he has become one of the most recognizable faces in the world after his Star Wars performance in The Force Awakens. Please welcome everyone's favorite former stormtrooper. What's going on with Finn right now? It's been painful. Um, it's been a process. Um, I, I think Finn, Finn uh, definitely stood up for himself in the end of Force Awakens and, and caught a bit of an injury to the back. Um, so he's in recovery, but he will be back in The Last Jedi. And uh, he's not playing this one. Welcome to 
other moments that I remember clearly was watching you jump up and down so enthusiastically when you saw that first trailer. What is it like going from that moment to being here now after all these years, knowing that everybody knows your character and it's as iconic now as Han Solo, as Luke Skywalker? How does that make you feel? Uh, it's, it's phenomenal, I mean, but it's a, it's a process that I didn't go through alone, obviously. I've, I've had Daisy here and Kathy's there, uh, been there since the beginning and JJ and now we've got Ryan on board and a new team at The Last Jedi but it feels fantastic and phenomenal to be here and to go through that path and it just feels crazy that we're so far away from The Force Awakens and now we're, we're at the, the, the second installment of the franchise, it's, it's awesome. You and Daisy have gone on like this meteoric rise together, I mean it's, it's unbelievable. So. Do the two of you ever just call each other up and go, hey, cultural icon, what are you up to today? Well, uh, me and Daisy, I, I was working on Pacific Rim, and Daisy... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and we, we spoke to each other in different costumes, and it was, it was strange. It was kind of like, no, we need, to, we need to get back home. <laughs> it's, it's good to be home. It's good to be home. So, John, one of the iconic relationships that come out of The Force Awakens is that of Finn and Poe, and of course, an now legendary character. So, unfortunately, Oscar couldn't be with us today, but, I know, but I've got to ask, does that relationship continue to blossom in The Last Jedi? Absolutely. Where's my boy? Where's my boy? There's always a new adventure for us to go on. Very excited. Anything else you want to tell us about Finn? Anything else you can tell us about Finn? Well, in The Last Jedi, um, it's, 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 a, it's a test for all the characters, but specifically for Finn, he wants to find his place now. Is he going to be a part of the Resistance, or is he going to keep running away from the First Order? We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of the First Order, Is there, is there anything that you can tell us about the dark side? After the demolition of Starkiller Base, does the First Order have to go back to the drawing board? Or was that just one part of their plan for galactic domination? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, Starkiller Base, big loss, big loss. But uh, they did manage to take out the seat of the Republic, and that's thrown the galaxy into chaos, and the First Order are jumping on that at the beginning of our movie. Um, very aggressively, not sitting on their hands. They're making some big moves at the start of our film. So, things are going to get dire. Everybody looks so pensive and angry. And I'm so upset! <laughs> I can't wait to find out what they're upset about. So we know we find out more about Ray. We know we find out more about Finn. We know that BB-8 comes back. Are there any new characters from The Last Jedi that you'd care to tell us about today, Ryan? There might be a few. Oh! So, there's a, we have a couple really fun new characters coming out, and uh, a few of whom I'm really excited to introduce you guys to, but one in particular who's here today, um, who has the biggest new part in the movie, and ironically is played by the smallest actor. Uh, she is one of my favorite people. You guys are gonna love her so much. I adore her, and I'm so proud and happy to introduce to all of you uh, Kelly Marie Tran, who plays... <laughs> I'm sorry about teasing you before that there were only going to be 10 people in the audience. Yeah, you You'll lied to me, that. Josh. Yes. So, Kelly, this actually isn't your first celebration, I understand. You were in London last year. Tell me about that. <laughs> yeah, I came to celebration last year. I was sporting my Finn t-shirt. Um, I walked the floor. I learned how to use a lightsaber. I went to all the cool booths. It was incredible, and I got to just hang out. And it just, the energy and the enthusiasm, it's just insane. It was amazing to be there. So when you were cast in The Last Jedi, I understand you had to keep it a secret, even from your own family? 
<laughs> yeah, um, they didn't know for four months after. I told them I was doing an indie movie in Canada. <laughs> At one point I actually got some maple syrup so I could like bring it back to them so they thought that I was really in Canada. I love how far the lie went. <laughs> I was like, I'm committing to this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what can you tell us about your new character? Oh, I'm so excited to share this with you. Um, so my character's name is Rose. Um, yeah, and she works in maintenance, and I just can't wait for you to meet her. Oh, there she is. <laughs> she's, uh, she's pretty rad. Rose works, Rose is a maintenance worker in the resistance, and I, for, for me, growing up, uh, one of the things as a kid in Colorado watching these movies, who you feel like you're a, just a, a, watching Luke Skywalker kind of get pulled out of, and I think it's why people respond to Ray also, get pulled out of uh, wherever he is and be this unlikely hero. The notion that uh, you can, anyone out there, any of us, can step up and turn into a hero. That's really kind of where the character of Rose comes from. She's not a soldier, she's not looking to be a hero, and she gets pulled in a very big way into an adventure in this movie with Finn. And, Ke and Kelly just embodies that for me. Oh. <laughs> That came out badly. We, it, we were in the other <laughs> Last night, I looked at you, and I said, this is crazy. Your life is about to change. Your anonymity is going to be, I mean, you can ask these two. How do you feel today, like, coming out here and knowing that you are now a part of the Star Wars universe? You know, um... <laughs> It's incredible. I mean, I think so many people tell you what this is going to be like, and then you get on the stage and you just hear so much excitement and so much love for this thing that you get to be a part of, and I just want to do it justice. So thank you, everyone, for letting me be. And now, a man who plays one of the most iconic characters in film history. The one. The only. Mark every day. I never get used to it, you know? You go back to our everyday lives where, you know, instead of adoring fans, uh, my wife's telling me to take out the trash and pick up after the dogs in the yard. It's very unglamorous. <laughs> so I have to ask you the question on everybody's mind, I imagine, for the last two years, does Luke Skywalker finally get to speak in this film? <laughs> I might be one of the most valuable characters to Lucasfilm. Not because I'm a legacy character, but thanks to short-term memory loss, I don't remember what I had for breakfast. So I don't remember. And I, I, I'm joking, but even when I went in and did ADR and saw this footage, it was like an out-of-body experience. You know, it's so contained in its own world. And you show up in jeans and a t-shirt, and it's uh, really scary. You know, Ryan came out to my house, to, like he went to all of us, to discuss the uh, script and so forth, and we spent several hours. I brought him into my TV room and showed him my favorite episode of Sergeant Bill Co. You know, important things. <laughs> and I said to him, the truth of the matter is, 
uh, one of the reasons I loved Rogue One so much in the prequels was that I was not in them. <laughs> I could just relax and enjoy. I didn't have any anxiety about whether I did the right thing or, or, or was successful. And I said to Ryan, you know, we had a beginning, a middle, and an end in our original trilogy. I don't, I just don't want to tempt fate. You can't catch lightning in a bottle over again. And the truth be known, Ryan, is I'm terrified. You know what he said? So am I. <laughs> and I said, now, that's a director I could love. <laughs> because he didn't, yeah. And I see Rupert and Brothers Blue, all of it, and Brick. You can't, you can't categorize. You know, a lot of times you see director's films and there's a, there's a thread that goes through them all. And his films are all so diverse and all so uh, ambitious in their own way. And he, in this experience, he's rocketed to the top of my all-time favorite directors, believe me. I, I couldn't have done it without him. He was my seeing eye dog. And all I knew was, if Ryan's happy, I'm happy. I totally turned over my performance to Ryan and just sort of knew that if he was satisfied, then we got it right. Uh, I think the feeling seems very mutual among the that. Coming back all these years later, what is it like to find Luke's voice again? Not just vocally, but metaphorically. What's it like getting back into this character after all these years? Did you go back and watch the old films? Is he at such a new place that it didn't matter? Well, in, in Seven, you discover Luke, obviously, is a hermit on this island, and he's... There's so much unsaid about where he's been and what he's done. And actors like to write their own backstories. You know, you want to figure out what, what you've done and where you've been. And, but I realized that wasn't really important to the story of Force Awakens. I still made it up myself. And, you know, I, I tried to show it to JJ, and he, you know, was accommodating, but basically patted me on the head, gave me a cookie, and made me go away. <laughs> because, you know, whatever, make it up. I mean, they allude to things that have happened, and to a certain extent, you know, it's not Luke's story anymore. But I, I think he's an important part of the overall arc of the saga. And again, there's a lot of mystery about him, even within the film. So you have to fill in your, your own backstory. I'm sure there'll be comic books and video games and novels that tell the story, but uh, like I say, uh, there's... And I shared with Ryan a lot of my own things. I thought, I have to relate to things that are real in my own life to understand where Luke is at this point in his life. I'm so. just going to break in here. Make sure that everybody out there realizes he is so significantly important to the, this next film. Well, that's good to hear. And by the way, I look down and, you know, I see Olaf, I see, I see Wonder Woman, I see God, I see my, I mean my colleague, Daisy, my son, and this one, if she were any cuter, she'd be an actual Disney cartoon. <laughs> Doesn't come any cuter than <laughs> I love that you look at me and see an animated character. <laughs> uh, now, this is a personal question, because, you know, I, this is how I approach a lot of my roles. Did you do a lot of physical training to get into Luke's <laughs> We you? all had a good laugh about that. <laughs> Because, you know, when I read the script, the very first line is, Luke Skywalker is vanished. I went, okay, let's go. <laughs> and I'm reading about, everybody talks about me all through the movie. Skywalker must be stopped. <laughs> the sword of Skywalker is dangerous. I kept making all these notes. Ooh, that's the 33rd mention. And people were talking about me, talking about me. You know what I thought when, when I, I said, you know what, I know I'm probably going to come in towards the end of the third act. 
<clears throat> but I thought when the when you were in the forest and the lightsaber jiggled in the snow, I said, oh, okay, here I am. <laughs> and it flies into the hands of Ray. <laughs> she didn't even do any training. I dropped out of school, so I should talk, right? But no, I, it, eventually, the only thing that made me nervous is I thought if it, if, if it doesn't work and I turn around and it seems so obviously a cliffhanger, which I'm standing on the edge of a cliff, get the metaphor? <laughs> so I, maybe they should just print to be continued on my forehead. But after all that training, I went uh, for 50 weeks, twice a week, uh, never canceled and was never late. Not like some people I can say, space sis. Uh, but, so I thought I was gonna do something physical. <laughs> I read the last page, I said, really? I turn and remove my hood, that's it? <laughs> then I joked about a, a, a big long speech that was cut at the last minute. See, I lost total credibility with the public through social media because I buy all the time. <laughs> And I post, you know, an exclusive look at an episode A trailer, and it's a picture of my trailer on the back lot, you know? <laughs> what my kids call dad humor. So this year, someone said, are you gonna post one of your classic April Fool's jokes? And I said, absolutely not. So believe any outrageous, crazy, or absurd notion I post that day. I, I can't get away with it anymore. It's like the boy who called Clyde Wolf. Nobody believes me. That's why on this April Fools, I didn't even wait, I just put April Fools picture and said in episode eight, Luke has taken a vow of silence but communicates telepathically. <laughs> I'm hoping to do voiceover, but director Ryan Johnson is leaning towards subtitles. Make the kids read, make the kids read. <laughs> Yesterday was the incredible 40th celebration, which you attended. Uh, anything you want to say to all of these incredible fans after 40 years of going on this journey with you? Well, listen, you people, first of all, if it weren't for you, I would be sitting here right now. Uh, you know, honestly, you've been so supportive. Uh, you're there for us all the time. Uh, in good times and bad times. I got a little flack last night because I made the comment, you people are more supportive than my actual family. <laughs> because they criticize and make fun of me, but and I'm sure you do too, but not to my face. <laughs> but no, I thank you all so much. I mean, it really is, it's almost moving when you really think about how we've affected so many people, inspired so many people, and. Uh, it, that it's generational, that it's handed down, that the original fans are grown with children of their own. I met my wife online for Empire, you know. Uh, whatever it is, it's... Uh, and, and going to the hospitals and, and meeting these kids that have such dire adversities in their lives. No, no. It's... it's uh, it, it, it makes you feel like... It, it puts things in perspective. It makes you think, you know, maybe just doing voiceovers on cartoons and playing the trickster is so trivial compared to the kind of uh, benefits that these kids get from meeting people like this because it's so inspirational to them. I mean, I met a little boy who had lost his arm because of tuberculosis and he told me, I wasn't worried because Luke lost his hand. I know. You know, I mean, it's, it's tough. I mean, it's, it can be emotionally harrowing. So I always use, kind of use uh, reverse psychology and, and say, uh, are you faking? You don't look sick to me. Come on, you're trying to get out of school work, right? But I'm telling you, it, it's a, a gift and something that I will never take for granted. So thank you all so, so much. unbelievably generous and patient. So I'm gonna ask Ryan, do you have anything that you brought today? For the fans? 
I might. Uh, so I want to show you guys this. I'm so excited and happy about this. We have a teaser poster that is at, no, 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 I just want to reenact for everybody yeah. at home. This is what we heard. Ah! Oh! <laughs> just stabbing in the back. When you guys see this, so can we, can we put it up? Can we put it, it is absolutely gorgeous. Can we zoom out? Important to know, every single one of you sitting out there gets one of them.
this cast and crew and everything that I'm so proud of this movie. I cannot wait to, for the coming year to show you guys more and more and to show you the movie eventually. That will happen eventually. Right now, though, all I want to do is watch the trailer in this yeah. room with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much. Much more to come. We love you guys. Thank you, Celebration. truth. 